Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be restoring this coffin smoothing plane. It really just didn't work. Um, it had the wrong iron, wrong wedge, the sides were starting to split out. So we got a good bit of work to make this functional again, but with a little bit of time and effort, it can be a fully functional plane. So let's dive in and make this thing work. This plane is a bit of a Frankenstein. It's got pieces from all sorts of places, but we're going to take it apart and make it work. The wedge is from a different plane. It's at a weird angle. The iron is a little bit too big for it. Plus there's a few cracks in the body and there's a lot of little things that need to work to make this actually function. But with a little bit of work, we can make it work as it is. <laughs> so first thing, let's take a look at the body here. You can see there's a crack on both sides. This is pretty common with uh, coffin smoothers. There's also a crack on the bottom. And uh, the, one of the easiest ways to do these is just to epoxy them up. I know it's going to drive some people crazy, in which case then use wood glue. Uh, but epoxy really is one of the best glues for this. It will fill in the crack uh, because in squeezing in the crack, you're just introducing more stress into the wood. So if you just fill it in, uh, then you have a good bond. You're not having all that stress in the wood and it, it works out pretty well. Using Total Boat High Performance, this is my pretty much go-to um, uh, adhesive epoxy now. I really like it and you can pick it with a couple different hardeners. Um, I have the, I think it was the medium in there, but you can also get with the slow set so it works in a little bit farther. The medium or the slow allows it to be a little bit more viscous so it will work down in there. You can let it sit in and then come back later and clean it up. Putting a, a clamp on the side and uh, that will actually um, pull those cheeks in just a little bit um, as I was looking at them and where they were isn't exactly where I'd want them to be so we're going to put a little bit of stress into it but just up on those cracks not down on the bottom. After that's been set we need to then clean off all this extra epoxy and this way this is where a card scraper really comes in clean and it allows you to get it off really easily. While we're at it we're just going to go ahead and hit the rest of the body. There's lots of nicks and scars and, and bumps and bruises in this. We're going to leave those in because that, that tells a little bit of the story. On the inside we're going to use some files and floats to clean it out and get it back to shape making sure we get all of the epoxy back to the original size of the mouth. We're going to actually have to open up the mouth a bit on this one because the new iron is a little bit wider than the one that was originally in there, apparently. But we're just going to test it, make it fit. we got to make it a little bit wider, so we're going to bring in the float and drag it out. It was just about uh, a little less than a sixteenth of an inch. We had to take a little bit off either side to make it work all the way down in there. After that, we can make sure that the iron slides all the way down in, and booyah, it does! That's half the battle. Now we need to look at the wedge, and the wedge is at a different angle than the body. You can see how there's some wiggle room in there. So we're going to reshape the wedge to then fit the angle of the body, and this just means taking a little bit off the tip, test it, take it off, shave it some more, until we get a nice tight fit in there, and you can see how it's a good solid fit. It's at the same wedge all the way down. We're going to then scrape the wedge, since we scraped the body, just to make it homogenous and all look about the same. Now for the sole, we're going to scrape off the uh, the glue that we had on there and anything sticking up, and we're going to check it for flackness. Because this is an old one, there's a bit of a dip in the middle, and uh, we can just check that with a straight edge or winding sticks if you really want to, and then you, fl you flatten a wooden plane with another plane. And you see how here I'm taking it off of either side and nothing in the middle of the mouth. I want to make sure that the mouth is down to nice and flat. So we can take it all the way across, not worrying about that little tip up at the front, we just want to have it flat all the way across. Do a little bit of scraping with the, uh, the notch out for the bolt, make sure that everything is good and clean and we can take it on to the, uh, the iron. Now the iron, normally I would just sharpen it freehand, um, but I ended up doing it on this because I'm actually going to use it for the test, so this gave me a chance to experiment because this is the one iron that was a bit too wide to fit into the mouth below, and I wanted to make sure I sharpened it exactly at 35 in the same way as I did for all the others. Oh, so close, just a little bit of a bird to fall off. Happiness. Now we can fit it on there and put the chip breaker in. And I noticed around here the chip breaker isn't quite a tight fit, but we're going to experiment with it and see what we get just out of the out of the box. And uh, put it all in, tap it down in place, make sure you use an old dusty mallet. That way you get uh, all the dust all over the place. <laughs> Actually hadn't used that mallet in a year or so, but uh, yeah, now we can use it. Using a leather mallet so I'm not denting up the wood, although most of the time I would just use a metal mallet. Uh, in this case, um, I had it way too deep and I was also noticing that I was clogging up the chip breaker, so I had to back it off, try a different wood, 
and uh, that we got the right depth on there, made sure the iron was working, but it was also clogging up the chip breaker, not going quite as smoothly as I wanted. So we're going to adjust the chip breaker as well. Now I have several videos on that. Uh, if you ever get clogging right up by the mouth, um, it's usually not that the mouth is too tight, it's usually that the chip breaker isn't fitting well. You can see how it's touching on either side and not in the middle. We need to address that. So we're going to put the chip breaker down at an angle so the back of it is lower than the plate and grind it down into flatness. Start on the core stone. It doesn't take very long because it's a much, much softer steel and we keep going until we get rid of it. Need a little bit more on that one. Then we're going to take it to the medium and then onto the fine. Uh, no need to strop it. We're just looking for a straight edge to then fit into the, the iron. We want it to seat perfectly with the iron so that there's no air going between them. That way no chip can come up and slide underneath the chip breaker. Just finish it off on the, the smooth plane. Make sure it fits and then take it for a test. If you want to look through it, you can hold it up to the light and make sure you don't see any light coming through. Um, and push it down, make sure everything is in there good. There were a few other nicks and scrapes on the iron and the blade that were sticking out, and so I used some 400 grit sandpaper just to clean those up. I'm not taking any of the uh, uh, main patina off, I'm just removing any of these uh, bumps or bruises that might get into the way. There have been a lot of dings in this over the years. So with a little bit of work on that, making sure that they're all smooth and happy, we can then assemble this together and take it for a final test drive. Lock it down on. Yeah, it's not the original screw, but nothing on this plane really is original. And, ooh, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's nice. I like that. This is, this is happy. <laughs> it's nice to see an old plane come back to life, and I could take this and do quite a bit of work with it. It is an incredibly enjoyable plane to work with, and I'm looking forward to seeing this for many years to come. So for the final finish, of course, this is the Wood by Wright shop, so it's boiled linseed oil and paste wax. I'm going to let it soak in as much boiled linseed oil as it wants, and then come back after that has sealed and um, coat it with paste wax, let that smooth out, and then polish it down to a nice finish. And there we go. Brought it back to life. So there you have it. Um, the sides were starting to split out, and so we were able to glue those back up in. The iron was the wrong size for it, so opening up that... The iron was the wrong size for it, so opening up that width a little bit allowed us to actually use this. Um, and of course, changing the wedge, because it was the wrong wedge for this. It was kind of one that was intended to be our decorational, but now we have a functional coffin smoother. So uh, yeah, this is um, kind of cool. And this is actually provided by Duckworth. Um, if you've been on the channel, uh, The Duck, he is the one who sent this to me, so I'm gonna be sending it back to him, but I'm actually going to be using the iron in the upcoming iron test. And it was kind of fun to, uh, to do this. And you may have also noticed on Thursday, um, I did a video talking through how to actually set up a wooden plane because this is a uh, fun one to show that on. So if you want to see that, I'll try and leave a link to that video down below as well. So I want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons and members here on the channel. Everyone has clicked that join button and to uh, Duckworth for sending this to me to let me play with it. I'm looking forward to sending it back to you and hope you like it as well. If you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, tell them thank you because they are the ones quite literally keeping the lights on this channel. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So can you really truly say that you brought back to life a coffin plane? It was kind of one that had been Frankenstein together to be decorative, but now we actually have a functional coughing smoother.